Today is our Sankran celebration. As the announcer said, Sankran means moving into the new year. And it's good to stop and take stock what kind of new year we want. People usually come and ask for blessings on the new year. In Thailand, we have four new years. There's the Western New Year on January 1st, there's the Chinese New Year, and there's the old Thai New Year, which is the last new moon. And now there's Sankran, which the Thais borrowed from India. So you get four chances to start the new year, four chances to get blessings. And as the Buddha said, the best blessings are the blessings that you give to yourself through your own actions. So you might want to stop and think, what kind of actions do you want to do in order to bless yourself in the coming year? One of the standard blessings is that you set your life straight, you set your mind straight. In other words, think of the right direction you want your life to go. You realize that it's going to have to depend on where your mind is, where your mind goes. So what kind of life do you want to have? Because it is up to you. Remember the Buddha's awakening. He, he saw that we are born in line with our actions. And our actions, of course, are intentions that we follow through with in order to gain some aims. But all too often our aims are scattered all over the place. And as a result, we don't get what we really want. Think about the Buddha. He decided he wanted ultimate happiness more than anything else, and he was willing to give up everything that was needed to be given up in order to find that happiness. That's how he found the truth. That's how he gained awakening. So it's good to stop and think, where do you want to direct your life? Where do you want to direct your mind for the next year? One of the standard blessings is that you gain in long life, beauty, happiness, and strength. So think about what are the causes for long life and beauty and happiness and strength? Long life, of course, comes from not harming others. If you take the lives of others, then your life is going to be cut short as well. If you want a good long life, you don't take the life of anybody at all. No matter how much they provoke you, no matter how much they may anger you, or how much they may inconvenience you, you realize that you have to protect their lives the same way you would protect your life. Which means that when people do things that disturb you, or when animals do things that disturb you, you have to have patience in order to put up with some difficulties, in order to make sure that your precepts are kept. It's the same with beauty. As the Buddha said, if you want to be beautiful, you don't give vent to your anger. You may feel anger inside, but you don't let it come out outside. This doesn't mean you bottle it up. When you sit here and meditate, you find ways of taking any tense energy in the body and letting it disperse out the palms of your hands, the soles of your feet. Breathe through any tension in the body. So when someone does something that goes against what you want, you have to stop and think. What would be the appropriate thing to say right now? The Buddha doesn't say that you be a doormat. You don't just give in to what other people are doing when they're being unjust. But you have to stop and think and realize, okay, if you get angry about what they're doing or saying, then you're going to make it hard for yourself to see what is the proper thing to do or in response. So ask yourself, how am I breathing right now? How am I talking to myself about this anger? How am I talking to myself about this situation? Can I talk to myself in a different way? Can I breathe in a different way? This is one of the reasons why we practice meditation, is to learn how to breathe properly. Something as basic as breathing, you think, well, everybody knows how to do it. Well, we know how to do it, but we don't know how to do it well. There are ways of breathing that can disperse the anger, can disperse the tension in the body that comes with the anger, then it's a lot easier to think about what should be said, what should be done. And think about the images also that you hold in mind. If you see the other person as a monster, you have to look at the person, are they really a monster? Well, no. If the other person seems to be a dog, well, no, they're not really a dog, they're a human being. It's just that, they're, just that their behavior right now is not up to your standard. And if you can't think of any good that they've done in the past, well, have some compassion for them. Because people who have no goodness to them at all are really in for a bad future. So you don't want to add anything bad to the future they're already creating themselves. 
when you learn how to think in these ways, it's a lot easier to develop some patience and then think what should be the right thing to do. Don't act on anger. You are free to act in any way you think is skillful, but don't let the anger get in the way. When you don't give vent to your anger, then you look a lot better. And as the Buddha said, it's a future of beauty comes to those who don't give vent to their anger. As for happiness, you want to look for happiness in a way that doesn't harm anybody else's happiness. This is why the Buddha teaches the three acts of merit or the three acts of goodness, being generous, being virtuous, and developing a mind of infinite goodwill. If you find happiness in these things, you're finding happiness in a way that's totally harmless. If your happiness depends on taking things away from other people, if it depends on material gain, if it depends on status, if it depends on getting praise, sensual pleasures, it's going to mean that somebody else has to lose in those areas because they're not going to stand for it. So whatever happiness you gain there is not going to last very long. If you want a lasting happiness, find happiness in a way that's harmless. Be generous, not only with material things, but also with your time, with your knowledge, with your forgiveness, with your energy. The more you can give in these ways, the more spacious your mind becomes. And a spacious mind is a really good mind to live in. If you're stingy with your things, stingy with your time, stingy with your knowledge, you're living in a very narrow little place, which is not comfortable at all. So if you want genuine happiness, you'd find happiness in a way that causes no harm. And then finally, strength. Physical strength is something we all want, but what's really important is mental strength, the strength of mind, the strength of your heart. Because physical strength, every body is born and has to go through the process of aging and then illness and then dying. So no matter how strong you get physically, it's going to have to go fall away at some point. But mental strength doesn't have to fall away. The Buddha lists five strengths that you need. There's the strength of conviction, the strength of a healthy sense of shame, there's the strength of compunction, the strength of persistence, the strength of discernment. Conviction is conviction in the principle that when you do good, you're going to get good results. If you do evil, the evil will come back to you. That's the most important strength right there. Because if you don't believe that your actions have real consequences, you're not going to be strong enough to do difficult things that need to be done. But if you leave in the, believe in the power of your goodness, okay, then it is a lot easier to do good. You have the strength. As for a sense of shame, there are two kinds of shame. There's a shame that's the opposite of pride, and there's a shame that's the opposite of shamelessness. And it's the second that the Buddha is recommending. In other words, you think about the things you would do and you think about the people you respect and what they would think if you did those things. And if it's something that they would not approve of, why do it? Find good people to, in whose eyes you want to look good in and think about them every time you're tempted to do something you know is going to be harmful. If you'd be ashamed to do that thing, you realize it's an action that's beneath you. This kind of shame actually goes together with a sense of self-esteem. Realizing that you're better than certain actions and you'd be ashamed to do them. And that's a strength. The same with compunction. Fear of doing something that would lead to suffering down the line. You stop and think about the long-term consequences of your actions. And you realize you have it within your power to do things well and within your power to do things poorly. A lot of fear that we have in the world is fear that comes from a sense of weakness. But this is the fear that comes with strength. You realize you have the power to choose your life, and you'd be afraid to use that power in a way that would cause you to suffer down the line. That's a strength. It enables you to resist all kinds of unskillful urges inside the mind. Then there's the strength of persistence when you develop the desire to do what's right, the desire to abandon what's wrong. And finally, discernment that allows you to see what's right and what's wrong and figure out ways to make, it, make yourself want to do the right thing and want to abandon the wrong things. When you have these kinds of strengths inside of it, these don't have to fall away with the strength of the body. They can carry you through aging, illness, they can even carry you through death. 
So work on the strengths that really stick with you and not just leave you as you get older. Because we live in this world and we have to depend on our own strength. It's not the case that life gets easier as you get older. Actually, in many ways it gets harder. So you need the mental strength inside to deal with situations as they come up. So when you have these qualities, then that's how you bless yourself as you come enter the new year. You bless yourself with long life, you bless yourself with beauty, you bless yourself with happiness, you bless yourself with strength. By working on the causes of these things. So stop and take stock of the year. This is the last new year for this year. So this is your last chance to get things off to a good start. When they got off to a good start, then you want to maintain them as well. So that every day becomes a day when you give yourself blessings. And when you can bless yourself like that, okay, that's a sure sign of a good year.